If you were buying a small woodland, I'd recommend to anyone doing it. Quite a sort of entertaining thing because you, you spend a lot of time out in the wilds in, in, in nature and uh, you know, looking at things like deer and if you're sitting up here in the hides you see a lot of owls and rabbits and you know. But woodlands involves a lot of very hard work. At the initially weeding them because you have to spray around the, to keep the weeds down so that the weeds don't kill the trees. And um, then in later years, you're doing the first thinnings, which are basically not really very commercial because the trees are too small still, but you need to thin them out because otherwise the trees, if they're all cramped up tight together, you have no undergrowth. If you have any bird life, they need lots of cover on the ground so that they can, you know, some of the birds nest on the ground, uh, like the pheasants and the partridge and snipe and uh, woodcock and those sort of things. So you want a diverse environment for you know, all, all the different species to flourish, from insects to whatever. If you have a very closed canopy with no sunlight getting down to the ground, you will have, you'll just have some pine trees. And the rest of it is ecologically dead. The first thinnings are usually done with chainsaws. When the trees are 40, 50 years old, you get the mechanical harvesters in, and that's about the only time that the, the woodlands show any form of profit. We have used horses on the high ground. You want to protect the archaeology and you want to protect sensitive soils. The other reason for, for using horses would be on very steep slopes where the mechanical forwarder really can't get in, so you'd use horses. In many ways, I'd like to see more grants for using horses. Around here, it's full of bracken and ferns and nettles and you know everything you could, you could ask for. A big part of woodland management is making paths, uh, just for getting, getting around in here. This is interesting because this is the, shows you the difference between bracken and a fern. This is a fern and as you can see there's only one stem coming from the ground to the top, it's only one stem. Whereas this is a plant of bracken and you can see that multiple stems come off a main stem. Bracken just takes over with everything over, it's very invasive whereas ferns tend to co aren't so dominant and they tend to coexist with other things. So you get a more diverse cover on the ground. If a fern is growing, it's a sign of it being an ancient woodland. The fact that there are ferns in this area suggests there's been woodland here for many, many years. The stand is here specifically for the purpose of culling the deer. Deer uh, do do a lot of damage and as a result the Forestry Commission is, is really quite uh, insistent that we, you know, people involved in the management of the woods uh, make the effort to cull, not exterminate. There's no way we want to exterminate the deer. We just want to cull them to keep the numbers at a reasonable level. Another thing is the, the sporting is, in other words, the, the shooting. A lot of these rural estates, the woodlands would never have been planted if it wasn't for the, the shooting. So the pheasants and the partridge, well, you know, that is an important part of woodlands because they go towards paying for the woods because it takes 40, 50 years before the woods become profitable. The woodland that we're in at the moment is more or less a mature plantation that probably will be clear felled in the next five, ten years. But um, sitting up in these, these high chairs, you, you need a good purpose, and nature provides that purpose for you. Just seeing the deer, you don't need to kill them. You can sit up here and see them, and you get a very good panoramic view of what's going on around you. You I mean, don't need I, to kill them, but you need to cull them. You need, well, that's, that's quite true, but uh, sometimes you can see them and you think, I just don't want to do it, I don't want to kill anything today. And you can say, it's your lucky day, on you go. But I personally am not that keen on killing things. I prefer to capture them on paper rather than physically, but it is part of the job and you have to be realistic. The, the thing with land and you know forestry in particular is that it's never short term. It's something that lasts for a lifetime and beyond a lifetime. You know, if I plant a tree, I will never see it in this state now. My family has essentially been here for over a, a hundred years now. It, you find, feel a very sort of personal connection to these woods, and it's not just a family connection. It's not just a hundred years or however many years. Uh, we've been here. We are part of nature and I, I like being, 
I like having that sort of pointed out to me by barn owls and everyone else in the woods here. <laughs> 